Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. It's a great honor to have with us for our conversation the EU Commissioner for Energy, Mrs. Kadri Simpson. Commissioner, welcome and thank you for being with us. Good afternoon. Well, energy is a wide field. However, today we will try to enlighten and uh, focus on uh, some specific angles and uh, aspects of uh, your portfolio. And um, let's start with the Commission's goal, which is among its goals is uh, to make Europe more prosperous, healthier and ready to fulfill its uh, target for a greener, greener economy. The tool for this, as far as as uh, we know, is the Fit for 55 package. However, could you help us understand what does this package mean exactly? And what do you expect from, from uh, member states, of course? Thank you for the question, Irini. And, uh, and actually, this is um, great to be back at the Delphi Forum. And uh, I truly hope that uh, next time I will already be there in person. Um, because already last year I had a chance to talk about Green Deal and also about our commitment to become climate neutral by 2050 and uh, indeed right now we are in the situation where we can um, um, say that a couple of weeks ago the Council and the European Parliament reached the final agreement on the climate uh, law proposed by the Commission and uh, this means that um, there will be 55% emissions reduction target uh, in place for 2030. And this will be written in EU law. So um, right now, this year, in 2021, our priority is to propose um, the necessary legislative changes to reach that target. Already we do have only nine years to go and, and make uh, sure that uh, all sectors of the economy uh, will contribute to our decarbonisation agenda. And as you know, this July, we will present one of the most comprehensive policy initiatives in the Commission's history. We call it a uh, Fit for 55 package. This will include 11 legislative proposals and, uh, and it will cover climate and carbon pricing and taxation, also transport and trade, and of course, energy. And in my portfolio, we will revise um, two of our main energy policy tools, the renewables and energy efficiency directives to ensure that they are in line with our new ambitions. And, uh, and we need to consider all the measures that could strengthen our re renewables policy. And uh, for example, we are looking at uh, boosting the use of renewables in heating and cooling, uh, but also in transport and industry. And for member states, it means that uh, areas like energy efficiency obligation schemes, transport, heating and cooling and public buildings are particularly relevant. And as announced in our renovation wave, we will propose um, to extend the renovation obligation to all public administration levels besides um, central government. And, um, and we are in constant contact with the member states on our initiatives. And, uh, and once the proposals uh, are adopted, uh, we of course hope that uh, the Council will discuss them quickly and reach an agreement with the European Parliament as soon as possible. Thank you. So it is a, a truly ambitious plan, and the the key the key word, let me say, it's the RFF, the key for the implementation of uh, the green energy. So um, about uh, concerning the Greek uh, plan, among its pillars, the four pillars that has to do with the Greek plan, it's one that has to do with the Greek transition. What do you think about uh, this plan, and um, uh, how what? do you expect from Greek side? Well, um, like every member state, uh, Greece will of course be a part of, of these um, EU-wide discussions um, via the Council and, uh, and, uh, and of course uh, you will play your role uh, to shaping this final, uh, final um, legislation. And, uh, and as I already mentioned from the energy policy perspective, um, we, we do expect a strong emphasis on renewable energy and energy efficiency. And these targets and measures, um, um, they are well presented also in Greek plans. So um, um, for us, it is very important that both the production and consumption of renewable energy, um, that uh, they have already uh, made significant progress in Greece. 
well, we don't yet have the final data for 2020, but it is very likely that uh, Greece achieved a planned 20% renewables target. And the important thing now is to, to remain ambitious. Uh, Greece has set a 35% renewables objective for 2030. Uh, this is set in your uh, national energy and climate plan. And, and of course, this will require significant investment. This will require reforms. For example, um, connecting the electricity transmission system with um, unconnected islands and increasing the capacity of, um, of the distribution network. Um, only the, then you can integrate more renewables and, uh, and um, solve the necessary storage issue. And, uh, and uh, another uh, topic is how to attract private investors. Um, Greece could introduce reforms uh, that speed up the licensing process for renewable projects and, uh, and also ensure the financial stability and long-term sustainability of these investments. And of course, Greece has the historic opportunity to benefit from the new multi-annual EU budget and the recovery and resilience facility that we call RRF. So I know that uh, there are already many exciting plans for renewables in the pipeline, large capacity solar farms in Macedonia and Megalopoli and a concentrating uh, solar power project um, on Crete and other um, renewable projects. So um, there is also a lot Greece can do on energy efficiency, of course. Um, well, at the time you are phasing out lignite and, uh, and integrating um, an increasing amount of renewables to our energy system. And, uh, and uh, this is also a very good example for other countries uh, what to plan in this regard. Uh, however, there are uh, some uh, economies, such as France, for example, that uh, will keep depending on nuclear energy that it's not so green. Well, as you know, uh, um, we do have 27 member states and each of them do, does have uh, the unique energy mix. So, um, so um, also um, for us, this is very important that, uh, that all the uh, member states are committed to climate neutrality, but they do have the right to choose their own energy mix. And, uh, and we do respect uh, their right uh, to decide so. So, in the current position, we know that uh, there are member states um, who used to have um, um, nuclear capacities, but politically they have decided to replace it. Then we do have uh, member states who never ha have used uh, nuclear so far, uh, but, uh, but they now have decided that um, to replace more polluting solutions, um, lignite or um, hard coal, uh, they need um, alternatives, different kind of alternatives, and they are planning to, uh, to build first ever nuclear power plants. So um, this is um, um, national competence to decide uh, how your portfolio will look like. But for us, uh, it is important that all our member states are committed to, to reach climate neutrality. And, uh, and in this regard, we do have very good cooperation with all our member states. Uh, you know, some people will say, OK, we are in favor of a Greek economy, however, can uh, of a greener society. However, can this greener society can give a boost to the economy as well? Can this go together? Yes, of course. You remember that um, uh, in the end of 2019, when uh, the new European Commission started our um, uh, term in office and our president Ursula von der Leyen uh, presented Green Deal, then it was, of course, uh, uh, about our um, um, global ambition, but it was also um, our growth strategy. Because uh, we do see that um, if we will um, finance research and innovation that we definitely will need to reach our climate neutrality goals, then by doing so, we will create new jobs and uh, we will also uh, um, take up new solutions that will boost our competitiveness. And, and in, uh, in this regard, we also see that um, green investments will, uh, will create um, lots of jobs, uh, well-paid jobs all across uh, Europe. 
and, uh, and by doing so, um, different member states can benefit. So um, I am absolutely convinced that uh, this can and uh, will be the case uh, that uh, the entire recovery policy of the Commission is uh, based on principle that recover recovery should be green. And, and now we do have this uh, historic financial package that includes uh, EU budget and on top of that next generation EU. Um, totally it makes available 1.8 trillion euros and 30% of all these funds have to be spent on achieving our climate ambitions. So clean energy transition um, will cut emissions will reduce pollution and improve our health, but it also has a strong potential to create jobs and boost growth. And just to give you some examples, so according to our estimates, every billion euro of investment in renewable hydrogen, for example, will create 10,000 jobs along the supply chain. And similarly, well, solar power could generate uh, 400,000 direct jobs across Europe for 2030. So um, if we keep in mind that right now in the mining sector, there are less than 200,000 people uh, employed all over the Europe, then uh, yes, this can, this can create new opportunities and uh, this definitely will also change our trade portfolio because right now European Union is one of the major importers of uh, fossil fuels, oil, crude oil and natural gas. And if we will replace it with, uh, with our own production, then, uh, then uh, definitely, this is this will be part of our growth uh, uh, growth uh, um, agenda, and and again, uh, all the member states will benefit. Also, Greece will benefit uh, significantly from uh, from uh, long term budget, but also from cohesion funds, and I uh, and uh, I suggest to use those funds wisely. Um, we have three more minutes. And I would like to ask you one more question because you have received the joint letter from eight uh, ministers of uh, the European Union. Um, I, it was an initiative from uh, the Greek minister, Mr. Skrekas, that had to do with the importance of uh, EastMed pipeline to the region. So could you give us a little bit more details to this short time we have on this letter on, on your point of view and on, on, uh, on this East pipeline, East Med pipeline. Well, indeed, I received this letter, and uh, and uh, in upcoming days, I will also send out uh, my response. But well, I think that the main principle is that we recognize the role of natural gas during transition period. So uh, member states can use uh, natural gas uh, exactly in the way like Greece uh, plans to do to replace more polluting solutions. And, uh, and, um, but in the uh, long run, um, to achieve climate neutrality, um, gas sector has to be decarbonized. And we expect that the biogas and renewable hydrogen will take uh, this place in the sectors where electrification is not possible. So, um, we will also review EU gas market legislation this year. And main focus will be how to facilitate the, and, um, the uptake of uh, clean gases, hydrogen especially. So um, my first remark to you is that there is an ongoing public consultation um, started in the end of March and we invite all Greek stakeholders to contribute until 18th of June. Um, uh, well, now about this uh, letter that we received. Well, um, indeed, uh, we do know that uh, there are different uh, regional important projects in Cyprus and Cyprus uh, and um, um, Greece, among others, um, you sent us uh, a letter um, to promote um, your uh, your project. Um, and this EastMed pipeline is an EU project of common interest under the fourth PCI list adopted already October 2019. And it is currently in a conceptual stage and its commercial viability needs to be demonstrated. But a comprehensive feasibility study is currently underway and um, with 34.5 million of EU funding covering all technical elements of the project, including uh, engineering design and a deep sea seabed survey. So uh, we are closely following its pro progress and it is um, the responsibility of the project promoter to carry out the preparatory steps to be able to make a decision on the actual implementation. 
And this is, um, as you know, a very complex project. And we have to keep in mind that after 2050, gas market has to be decarbonized so that all planned projects have to be, uh, well, if we don't want to waste our common resources to the stranded assets, they have to be also um, useful after that time frame. Well, we try to we try to elaborate and to focus on as much issues as we can to the 15 minutes we had. I would like to thank you for your time, to thank you for the conversation and for the aspects you gave us, you offered us for uh, your portfolio, the energy. Uh, we had uh, with us uh, the EU Commissioner for Energy, Mrs. Kadri Simpson. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. Let's hope to, uh, next year to be all of us in person in Greece.